Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is an ASVAB, the military placement exam, specifically the arithmetic reasoning portion of it. This is a 17 problem math test of basic skills. Uh, there's no calculator allowed. This is the midterm for our course, Foundations of Math. I'm going to go through every problem and then reference what chapter it is in that Foundations of Math course. So problem number one here is fractions. That's chapter two. There's a link in the description of chapter two. If you don't know what I'm talking about on fractions, go back and watch that chapter on fractions and then come back and do the problems. I'm going to kind of work through this whole test. What I would recommend you do is print this test out first. Again, a link in the description. Have that test in front of you. You kind of want to sit in a timed environment, feel like it's the actual test. Pause the video. You do a few of the problems and then unpause the video, watch how I did the problems. Hopefully you'll pick up some tips and tricks on how I'm solving them, and that'll help you do well on the ASVAB exam or any standardized math exam. This is not the actual ASVAB. This is just practice problems to prepare you for that. There are two math sections on the ASVAB. The first is arithmetic reasoning, and the second is math knowledge, and that's going to be the final exam for this course. You need nine chapters up through probability to do this exam. Um, I go back and watch those nine videos. They're all like 10 minutes plus or minus a few minutes. There are sample problems there. There's study sheets attached in the description to all of those. Work your way through that whole course. Take this midterm exam, see where you are on it, and then progress from there. Please make sure if you have any questions at all, I'll post them in the comments and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. So let's go ahead and get started on this test. A couple quick ideas on test taking. First thing you want to do is mark up the exam as much as you can, and that's for two reasons. Reason number one is so you don't make any careless mistakes. You highlight important parts. And reason number two is if you're running out of time, you might want to move on and go back to that problem. If it's all marked up, you don't have to start all over again. Your previous notes are already on there. Next kind of test taking strategy is really go pretty slow and cautiously. Um, you don't want to miss some of the easy problems with careless mistakes while you spend and waste a lot of time on a really hard problem you might not get anyway. So all the problems have the same weight. Make sure you go slow and thoroughly and don't make any careless mistakes. A lot of these are really more about reading comprehension than math knowledge. So read it slow enough to make sure you don't miss a key word. When you see a key word, circle it. All right, so with that all said, let's go ahead and get started. Problem number one, pause the video. You do the problem and then I'll do it. This is from chapter two, fraction. Derek earns $64 per day and spends $4 a day on transport. What fraction of his earnings does he spend on transport? So we're comparing transport costs to total costs. That's a fraction of four to 64. I don't have to include the cents because there are no cents. And then I don't see the answer there. So that means I'm gonna have to reduce this. Four is divisible by two. So two will go in there twice. Two will go in there 32 times. That gives me two out of 32. Still, I could reduce that. Two goes into there once, into there 16 times. I look over to my answer. There's my answer right there. Okay, problem number two, also chapter two fractions. A recipe calls for six and a half cups of flour, but he only has five and a third cups. How much more flour does he need? So I'm going to do six and a half minus five and a third. The way I add and subtract fractions, common denominator, the number both those will go into is is a six, so I have six. I have to multiply this by three over three to get three six minus five. I have to multiply this by two over two to get two six. Now that I have a common denominator, I can subtract. Three minus two is one. Keep the common denominator of six. Six minus five is one, and I have one and one six. Answer C right there. Okay, problem number three. Um, this is chapter one about whole numbers and division over a period of four days. So there's an important number right there written out as a word. He drove a total of that many miles. What is the average number of miles he drove each day? 956.58 divided by the number of days, four. So actually, before I even do this, I want to look and see if any of these make sense. They're all pretty close. You know, if this were a thousand, a thousand divided by four would be 250. So I could see they're all pretty. Four goes into nine two times. That gives me eight. Nine minus eight is one. Bring down the five. 
15, 4 goes into 15 three times uh, to give me 12. 15 minus 2 is 3, bring down the 6. 4 goes into 36 nine times. Let me look up there and see if I have an answer yet. So I don't have to do the whole division. I could just check right now. 239 are those two, so I know it's not going to be those two. I can cross them out. Goes into 36, 0, bring down the 5. 4 goes into 5 one time. There's my decimal point straight up. I could keep going or I could stop right there because there is only one answer with 239.1. So I could continue the, the other few decimal places, but there's no need to as long as I'm glancing at my answers. And there's my answer right there. Okay, problem number four is from chapter four, percentages. Fin Finer Fabric sells a total of 880,000 in fabrics during the course of the year. 32% of the company sales went to pay for labor to make those fabrics. How much did they spend on labor? So I have to do 880, 600,000, no cents, times 32. I'm going to take that 32%, convert it to a decimal. Decimal zero, I go over one, two. I think of this thing as like a little arrow with two decimal points. So 32% is the same thing as 0.32. Before I even do this pretty long uh, multiplication here, I'm just going to look at these answers and see if any make sense. So let me round that up to close to a million and round that down to about a quarter. A quarter of a million is a quarter million, 250,000. So it either has to be answer C or D. These don't make any sense at all, right? Which ones are going to be? I'm not too sure. Again, like I did on the previous problem, I, not, I might not have to multiply it all the way out. I'll just uh, see how it starts to go and keep checking between answers C and D. So 2 times 0, 2 times 0, 2 times 6, 12. Carry the 1, 2 times 0 plus 1. 2 times 8, 16. Carry the 1, 16 and 1 is 17. Here's my placeholder. And then 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0, 3 times 6 is 18 carry the one. And actually, I don't think I'm going to go any further than that. I'm just going to start adding these together. Zero, zero, two. My decimal place will be right here. Eight and one is nine. I'm going to look up here. Are there any up here with a 92 at the end? Here it is. Answer D. Okay, number five. Um, we're looking at percentages. So again, chapter four in the, in the course. The cost of milk rose from $2.50 to $2.80, so there's a 30 cent increase over several months. What was a percentage increase in the cost of milk? So it's the amount it increased over the total cost, and I have to convert that into a percentage. So I'm going to actually just do long division here. How many times does 250 go into 30? Well, the way I do this is I move the decimal place over 1, 2. And also here, one, two, there's my decimal place. I move it up. 250 does not go into 30, so I add another zero there. 250 goes into 300 one times. I put it down below. 300 minus 250 is 50. Bring down the next zero, 500. 25, 250 goes into 500 two times. So my decimal is 0.12. Convert it to a percent over two places. And that gives me 12% right there. Okay, number six right here is chapter five ratios. It's saying on a row map, one inch. So I have one inch represents 20 miles. Denise wants to travel from some place to another. The distance of four and a quarter inches. How many miles will it be? So this is what I'm looking for. This is what I don't know. Well, these two ratios are equal. So how do I go from one to four and a quarter? I multiply by four and a quarter. So that to get this value, I have to multiply by four and a quarter. So I'm going to convert that to a decimal, 4.25 times 20. I'm going to look over at my answers. And I'm looking for something around the 80, right? 20 times 4 is about 80. So that one doesn't make sense, but I have to multiply it out to find it exactly. Zero, zero, zero. Placeholder, 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 8. Add that together to get 8500. Zero, zero. Decimal places over 2. 85 is my answer. 
answer C right there. All right, number seven, also chapter five, ratios. In the freshman class, the ratio of in-state to out-of-state students is 15 to two. I'm gonna write that ratio as a fraction, in-state to out-of-state. There are 750 in-state students, so that has to be the numerator as well up there. How many out-of-state students? So that's a one ratio equal to another ratio of proportion. I could figure out how many times, 15 times what equals 750. Or I could also do another technique called cross multiply, where I take that number times that number, and that's equal to that number times that number. So 15 times x is equal to 2 times 750, 1,500. Solving for x, I divide both sides by 15. Those will cancel. And then 15 will go into there 100 times. And there's my answer, answer A right there. So not only was that ratio, that was also a little bit of algebra solving for the unknown x. All right, problem number eight right here. I think I'm actually gonna end it and split this um, arithmetic reasoning test into two different videos so it doesn't get too long. Um, this is actually on stats chapter nine. And let's see, at the fair, he sold the following pieces of artwork, $80, $168, $2, two dollars what's the average so remember the average is all the values added up divided by the number of values the number of values is going to be four so we add these up zero eight ten twelve carry the one nine fifteen twenty twenty five carry the two two and one is three so the total sale is 352 i take that 352 i divide it by the number of pieces of artwork um, four goes into 35 eight times. That gives me 32. 35 minus 32 is 32. Four goes into 32 eight times. So the average price is answer C, $88 right there. So again, if you have any questions, please comment below. I'll do the second half, the next eight or nine problems uh, in a separate video the following week. Again, this is going to be the midterm for our Foundations of Math course. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. I'm trying to prep you for any standardized math test. These skills are really transferable. All standardized math tests are pretty similar. There's always a little bit of a trick in the problem. Sometimes you don't have to do all that long division. Sometimes the answer is uh, kind of a giveaway. So the more tests you do, the more you practice, the better you're gonna get at them. So thank you for watching.